What increases the risk of breast cancer besides environmental toxins and postmenopausal HRT? Well, it's really no surprise that radiation such as x-rays and, and uh, mammograms and CT, CT scans, scan, and PET, PET scans, scans yeah, right. that those all can I increase our risk of breast cancer. But who says that it increases it the most? Well, the Institute of Medicine did this and they published it in Archives of Internal Medicine in June of 2012. And then what they're pointing out is that we really use technical procedures to make diagnoses with almost reckless abandon because one, we want to be sure we get the right, right diagnosis, and second, we don't really think about the risks of the radiation that we're exposing people to. A lot of people are just really curious and they just want to know what it is even if it's not going to make a difference in their treatment. Exactly. Well, a lot of people want to know. Patients want to know. They've got a bad back, okay? Well, do I have a disc or don't I? And how bad is it? Should I be looking at surgery? How about we do an MRI, doctor? Is that okay? And actually, the MRI doesn't have any radiation, but the other procedures, it's the same kind of thinking. A lot of people have heart disease, you know, it's a big fat in doing uh, CT scans, well, arteriograms too, and they even have more radiation doing that. And I have to say, 20, 25 years ago, we did a lot of arteriograms on people for coronary artery, suspected coronary artery disease because we thought that the bypass was a slam dunk. And as it turns out, we did all those operations, most of them, except for maybe 3% of them, in people who weren't in a critical state, didn't need it at all. Well, another thing that I've been noticing is people that have cancer, their oncologists want to follow it and mm -hmm. see how it's progressing. And I think there are questions that people should ask their doctors. Right. Could I get along without this test? Do I really need a CT scan every three months? Will it change my treatment? Right. And the answer really is, is it would be nice to know. Yes, it could help me with my treatment a bit. Could I do it in another way? Yeah, I probably could, but it's a lot more work. So it's, it's not just a matter of convenience, it's not a, a matter of having to know the answer because you're really curious. When you've got a procedure that has a downside that causes cancer itself, you do just about 11 or 1200 CT scans, you'll cause one cancer. Well, what's the difference if somebody had an ultrasound or an MRI as far as what the radiologist would be able to see? A lot. I mean, that there's no question when you're doing an MRI, particularly with contrast or a CT scan with contrast, you can tell a lot from those studies that are far better, oftentimes, in an ultrasound. But yet an ultrasound can find out some things too, and it may be something you do along the way. But, but you said an MRI with, um, with MRI, I, 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 That's right. I shouldn't have said that. An MRI doesn't have radiation, it's, but they do provide more information. So should you do the test? The question is, is how necessary is the test to do? I mean, we have people who are having heart scans because they were worried about the possibility of a family history of heart disease or they're doing a routine scan. Or if somebody wanted to do a whole body scan, which was pretty co uh, conventional maybe five or 10 years ago. Yes, you're gonna get information from that but always at the risk of radiation damage. And of course, it also sets the stage for doing more tests because we find a lot of results that are red herrings, meaning they don't really, they were better not found. It's, it's like they're not gonna hurt you and it leads down a path of doing additional tests that sometimes include biopsies or surgeries. And also don't sometimes the doctors order these uh, radiation type tests to cover themselves? I think that's to true. To protect themselves. Well, if, if the doctor, say somebody comes into the emergency room, they've had head trauma, and the doctor doesn't do a CT scan, looking to see if there might be some kind of bleed inside the, inside the brain. And you look okay. And then you go home and maybe you don't follow the directions as well as you were told to, to look for certain signs for bleeding inside the brain and somebody dies from it. Now, when you get to court, the attorney's saying, well, gee, doctor, why did you do a CT scan? Because you're gonna maybe lose the case uh, because you haven't done that. So we've got medical legal issues here. We've got doctors wanting to get the right answer and they all lead to doing more tests. And the art of a real healer is to be able to know when to do what. And when it comes to doing x-rays that 
are dangerous potentially, we ought to think twice about what we do. I also want to just reemphasize about the mammograms too, because I touched on that at the very beginning of this. Mm -hmm. And there are alternatives to mammograms. There's breast thermography. Right, no radiation. Mammotherm. It's also called mammotherm. Yeah, there's no radiation in that. And in my opinion, I, th I think that should replace the uh, mammogram in premenopausal women because it's very, very questionable that that does any good at all. And there's some. You mean the mammograms? The mammograms, yeah. There's they, they may not be of, of value overall, even though depending on what study you look at, you could make a case for either side. So when we're looking at the epigenetics of cancer of the breast or any other kind of, of cancer or we're doing screening tests, we have to keep in mind that while we may be getting more information, when you're screening large populations of people using dangerous kinds of radiation, we should think twice before doing it. And that doesn't mean don't do them, it just means let's cut back a little bit because we're also causing some cases of cancer. <laughs>